Fido is a 2006 released Canadian horror comedy directed by Andrew Curry. After some radioactive space dust resurrects the dead, uh, the world is plunged into a zombie wars. The film picks up several years after the end of the war in a sort of 50s-esque period when peace is, is sort of being maintained by a corporation called Zoncon. They protect communities by building big fences around them. They've also invented a collar that controls the behaviour of, of zombies. And so they can then be used as sort of servants to carry out menial tasks. One of these zombies is the titular Fido, um, and he's bought by the Robinson family after uh, the housewife Helen grows um, tired of being the only family on the street who don't have a zombie. <laughs> so, um, and her son, lonely young Timmy, who, who doesn't have many friends, he, uh, he makes Fido his, his new best friend. But after Fido's collar malfunctions and he chomps on a, on a neighbour, um, the neighbourhood and the, and the zombie's future are in jeopardy. And especially when uh, a new neighbour moves in who happens to work at Zomcon. Yeah, he's like the new, the new boss, the yeah, new security. security chief or something. Yeah, yeah. of Zomcon. <laughs> so I, I, I'm gonna, I feel like I should apologise profusely because I didn't enjoy it. No? Uh, no. I mean, I, I, I mean, I'd never seen it. I mean, I, you know, like I did, we did Hard Rain a couple of, mm. couple of weeks ago. I, 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 I promise you all <laughs> and you, I do not come into these... Mm. to hate on them or, or not enjoy them you know I set out to enjoy, I set out to enjoy every film I watch you know I'm a big fan of Shaun of the Dead and this it's a horror comedy it's a zombie comedy so of course nowadays it's one thing you think of is kind of Shaun of the Dead mm. and obviously not every film is going to be like Shaun of the Dead that's that's fine it's got Billy Connolly in there um, it's got that kind of 50s setting which some films do quite well but I I didn't laugh once. And well, it's not you know, it's not full on it's horror, not comedy. No, and no, it's no. not it's, full on comedy. It's either. a satire. Yeah, but it was, but it's still. I, I found my it dragged, <laughs> and I just I was I was bored by mm. it, and I didn't find. I mean, to start it out, I mean, I thought it was a really nice idea, mm. yeah. and I thought there was. I I felt like there was things in there that were interesting but I also felt there were things in there which we can maybe get onto later that that they could have delved into but they didn't delve into mm. I mean you know so it is set in this kind of 50s setting kind of alternate universe I suppose mm. it's it's funny because you've got the two there's almost two different types of films that they set in the 50s you've got the, the kind of films like Stand By Me, Shawshank Redemption mm. Matinee, is that set in the no, 50s? No, 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 wait, let me finish. Oh, okay. Let me finish. So you've got films like Shaw Shabbat and yeah. Stand By Me. You know, there's lots of films set in the 50s that weren't yeah. made in the 50s. Yeah, yeah. And they feel, they're kind of realistic and they feel like they were set. They feel like probably that's what the 50s are like. Um, but then you've got films that like Matinee. Oh, I see, right, yeah. And Pleasantville is another one. Parents that we did. Yeah. That kind of show the 50s in a kind of... Kind of hyper reality, yeah, yeah. a little bit kitsch, you know that kind mm. of fifties kitsch nostalgia. They're very yep. nostalgic. They look like a kind of glamorized Hollywood, uh, sorry, a glamorized nineteen fifties that you might find on adverts or mm. that kind of fifties, which is what this film does. But and I, and I, I saw an interview with, or I read an interview with Andrew Curry, the director, and he said that he wanted to set it here because of that idea of of this kind of Hollywood, this kind of fifties being that kind of you know, innocent mm. time, white picket fences <laughs> that everyone wants to go back to because it was safe back then. But in fact, it wasn't because I'm bubbling underneath the surface was all this violence, mm. which is which is fine. But I, I just something like matinee, the point of it being set in the 50s is, is it they're, they're kind of satirizing and sending up the whole B movie. Yeah. So there is a point to setting that one in the 50s. A film like um, Pleasantville, well, that's obviously satirizing TV sitcoms. As a point, putting that in the fifties, I'm not quite sure. Apart from what he said, why they set it in the fifties? I mean, apart I can imagine from it just looking, having a kind of yeah, interesting having a certain aesthetic, aesthetic to yeah. it. Exactly. I think if you set it now or when it was made, then you would have people protesting for zombies' rights, maybe <laughs> to not have them, maybe. you know, enslaved. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whereas yeah. in the fifties, maybe people didn't, you know. Didn't yeah, care yeah. so much no, about that's that. True. I don't know. You know, that's you know, if he didn't mention that in the interview, that's probably not the reason he wanted to set it there. I think it was more, like you say, a, a, an aesthetic thing. But um, well, no, I mean, there were. There, I mean, he said in there that there are. I mean, there's moments. I mean, it's it's. We did the film Parents ages ago when we first started this up, and in this film, I mean, it's about the family. There's it's kind of the family unit, which is yeah. kind of what Parents does as well. 
And I feel like Burbs, I mean, that's not 50s, but that's kind of got that suburban It does have a little bit of a vibe. Like it's it's kind of that kind of vibe. B-movie kind yeah, of thing. Kind of, yeah, kind of B-movie vibe in there, which is fine for this kind of, you know, horror mm. comedy. So his actual plot is is this zombie, this family that they get a, a zombie played by Billy Connolly, sorry, played by Billy Connolly, um, who they name Fido. You know, okay, well, that's kind of, you know, it's like the, the family pet dog. Mm. And in a way, that's what I would have liked more of. And I didn't get... It didn't feel like you have this boy and his dog, his zombie, and if you think of a, a child and their relationship with their pet animal, their pet dog, you think of lots of things that didn't get here. I mean, mm. death. The, interesting, this, this film is kind of swamped in death because it's about zombies, mm. and the one thing a child might do with, a, with an animal, with a pet animal, is lose that pet animal. There was no real connection to Fido other than it just being a gimmick here. Mm. That's how I felt Well, I mean, he was obviously a bit of a sort of replacement father, wasn't he? Because there was um, that too. the dad played by yeah. Dylan Baker, he's, yeah. he's sort of, he's not absent, but he's not really present not really all the present. time, you know, he, he for his wife or his son. And he's kind of, they're a little bit of an inconvenience and he'd rather just be playing golf. And there is sort of a backstory with him where... He was a child in the zombie wars and he, he, you know, I think he had to kill his own father because his father was going to eat him because he turned into a zombie. So he's a bit traumatised by that and has a, has, has a zombie phobia, which is why they don't have a zombie. But that doesn't really explain why he's so distant. Um, but yeah, that, that's obviously why Fido kind of takes that role. You know, he asks, yeah, he's the... Timmy asks him to play, you know, to throw a ball, you know, baseball with him. But he's like, oh no, I'm, I'm going... <laughs> Going to the, I'm too busy going to play golf, etc. So eventually Fido does that. It's a bit weird uh, <laughs> to, to sort of have a zombie step into the sort of father figure role, but mm-hmm. that's that's what the, the I mean, movie I, goes to. You know, I think, I mean, I was a kind of, not annoyed I didn't like it, because I wanted to like it. You know, I'm a big Billy Connolly fan. I mean, unfortunately, I, I did, I mean, okay, he's playing a zombie, but he did feel like he was just, I mean, he literally was just standing there kind of yeah. grunting and... Uh, but but uh, but uh, I, I read something something somewhere that he'd said that he was interested in doing it because he could he could act in a different way because he literally had to just act yeah no lines at all no time lines so he had his physical role mm. but I, but even then I didn't feel like he had anything to do I mean I, I guess I mean one of one of the issues I found I found the acting there was no connection with the family I got no sense of you know the the actors really gelling with each other mm. I didn't get that feeling. It, a lot of it felt kind of drawn out. Anytime you clock watching a film, that's that's never good. <laughs> I just didn't. I didn't feel the actors were. They just felt a bit bored. I mean, they were all. You know, it's a perfectly good cast. I mean, Dylan Baker's a great actor, and uh, Carrie Ann Moss is. You know, she's great too. I mean, I think obviously, fifties set films and films made in the fifties do have a certain sort of acting style, shall we say? And it can yeah, be sometimes a little bit stilted. Stilted, and yeah. So I thought that's maybe what they were going for, perhaps. Mm, you know, the way they speak to each other. I don't know. Henry Cherney is as the Zoncon guy, you know, the new neighbour. Yeah. You know, he was very sort of typical 50s kind of role and, and performance, I thought. You know, I think he's always, you know, he's a bit of a character actually showing up in Mission Impossible and stuff like that. I always enjoy him and I thought he was he was quite good in it. I just think there were, I mean, you know, of course, if you've watched a lot of zombie films and you've watched a lot of horror comedy, you've seen a lot of this stuff before. Anyway, yeah. it's not very gory. I mean, you think of zombie films, they tend to be drenched in gore yeah. and this one certainly isn't. There's a few things here and there, but there's nothing really, you know, you know, when I think of zombie, I'm not the biggest zombie movie fan anyway, but when I think of zombie films, I always want to go in and be like, oh, that was revolting, you know, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of the old, the um, I mean, the the original Night of the Living Dead wasn't that gory, but as you went on into the eighties, lots Day of and Dawn films. are quite gory. Yeah, yeah, they're quite gory, and then you know some of the things that um, Fucci made were pretty gory, mm. and Brain Dead, you know, Peter Jackson's films, Bad Taste. They were, you know, I love I love to be drenched in gore <laughs> in my horror comedies, um, and you, I didn't get that here. I didn't, no. I it didn't, I didn't have the. I mean, a lot of horror comedies don't always have great acting either. But I just felt they were, it was a good cast here. And to me, they felt like they were just coming in and, 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 and giving their lines. And I, I didn't, it didn't feel like they, any of them gelled for me. So that was a letdown for me. I mean, if you talk, you know, talk about the kind of acting that those sitcoms used to do in the 50s. I mean, a film like Pleasantville, 
which is based on that mm. that work for me. Have you ever seen that film? I haven't. No, no, it's I know. Totally I'm, I'm aware of one, it. Yeah, which, yeah. and it just works. It's, it, it it does something, and it, it gets it right. I mean, maybe it should have leaned a bit more into the sort of kitschness of it, and maybe exaggerated the performances maybe. a bit more. Yeah, um, I, I mean, mean I, to me, it felt like because of, at the start you have like the sort of typical new black and white news footage, newsreel yeah, footage that, yeah. of the zombie wars, and yeah. it's obviously sort of real war footage with some uh you know some some stuff created for the film that almost felt like that could have been a b movie from the 50s and then the film we get is what sort of you don't see is what happens after the war is over for yeah. example yeah so all the families on the street have i mean the zombie is a thing it's like you know it's almost like having robots in your in your homes that's the kind of what they're going yeah. for but I, I again i kind of thought there were so many different zombies walking around different people Lots of different families had them, but you only really focused on Billy Connolly's character mm. and this character played by Tim Blake Nelson and his his zombie girlfriend, which was a bit peculiar. I mean, uh, Tammy. Um, yeah. So you focus on her a little bit as well. But I kind of thought maybe it would have been more interesting if it was just Billy Connolly's. You just got it was more of a family unit, mm. perhaps like parents, and you bought the. It was just, it was it was low, more low key, but it just didn't hit the nail. There was probably a better zombie pun. I there, mean, it but, um, <laughs> I don't know. didn't hit the brain on the whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, just going back to Tammy and and uh, yeah, Tim Blake Nelson's character. Um, I mean, it goes, it sort of goes a little bit dark in some places. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. You know, they're sort of basically necrophilia. Necrophilia. Going I on. mean, this is yeah, and, and again, <laughs> this is there's there's many. I mean, it's a. It's a black comedy. I'm a big mm. black comedy fan. We've done a couple, you know, Shallow Grave and uh, uh, Day of the Beast, you know, two very dark comedies. I love I love dark comedy, black humour. It's kind of my favourite humour, I think. Um, and there's so many th- opportunities here for that really dark humour. Mm. Yes, you've got this this neighbour, played by Tim Blake Nelson, who's a great actor. You know, he also was in I Brother Where Art Thou, which is a, you know, a great film, and he's great in that. And he's got this thing going on, which is essentially necrophilia. And even, like... You know Billy Connolly's the family that he's with. There's a bit of you know she starts dancing with him. Yeah, yeah, there's a bit you know, of sexual tension. Yeah, a bit there, of sexual tension there. <laughs> so it's kind of it's leaning on some very dark ideas. Mm. But I just felt he didn't he didn't quite push them over, and he could have gone darker with it. I mean, there's also a couple of zombie kids as well who get you know yeah, shot true. and then burnt. The zombies do have a bit of hum- humanity in them almost, like they're not completely mindless. Yeah creatures again which is not explored very often in in zombie movies i mean i think day of the dead obviously with, well, Bob, that, with bub yeah um and then romero sort of explored it again in in land of the dead where they you know they start picking up weapons and things like that um and, and to have a definite sort of goal they want to kill kill humans for, but not because they want to eat them but sort of for revenge almost um and i'm sure there's others i think well i mean even at the end of Shaun of the dead you know when um yeah, Nick Frost's character. I mean, mm. he's like you know, uh, chained up in the shed. Chained up in the shed, and he kind of he's, he keeps him there, and he's like they're playing video games, yeah, yeah. and so they kind of play with that. There I mean, too, it so. was criticised on release saying it just sort of copied that brief idea. Uh, this one, made Fido, it into a film, Fido, yeah, yeah. Fido, yeah. yeah. But um, although you know, I think uh, from what I've read, he wrote, he wrote it you know like a decade before, so you know he didn't. It, it wasn't a, an idea he ripped off from somewhere. Um, so I think that's a little bit of an unfair comparison i don't know what it was about that period but in 2005 there was an xbox game called stubs the zombie i don't know if you remember that yeah. that was um you basically played a zombie right and the aim was to go around and munch brains and <laughs> attack people and stuff and there was a plot obviously but that was set in the 50s in a sort of 50s style thing as well and had loads of uh, sort of old songs redone by modern bands Okay. Um, so I don't know what it was about the mid noughties I mean, where that the zombies in the fifties was popular, but I, I think that I mean you know when you've got I mean there's kind of two types of zombies. The the main zombie film is is the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of zombies overrunning a world or a yeah. town or something like that. I'm more interested in films that do something different with mm. the zombie genre, and this would fall into that. Yeah. But yeah, I just unfortunately it didn't it didn't work on me. Um, so much, but you and you and have you seen it before? I had seen it a few yeah. years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's that's what drew me to it. It was because it was D- something original. a bit different. Yeah, yeah. yeah sure. Yeah. Um, and that you know, I remember seeing the trailer. I thought, oh, that looks you know, that looks interesting. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's not it's not perfect. It it kind of it it's like we said at the start. It's not full on comedy and it's not full on horror. So it's sort of stuck in the middle. And it does have this 
strange 50s aesthetic to it. I think, yeah, maybe it's not sure what it wants to be and it doesn't really lean into any particular Post, yeah, I think. genre. But no, I, I, I think because it was, it was quite different and quite refreshing, because there were so many zombie movies around at the time, I enjoyed it for that reason. Um, I maybe looked past some of the flaws that you picked up on just because it was, it was a bit different. And I, you know, I think, I don't know... <laughs> I don't think the actors just turned up and did and just uh, no, I said just, their lines. No, 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 um, no, of course they didn't do that. And, I, and that's that's kind of, that's a bit negative on the actors doing their job. Mm. And and that's fine. And But it also comes down to, it's not just the acting. It, it comes down to the director and yeah. how skilled the director is with the actors. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, there are a lot of directors who, who maybe aren't as... I don't know, maybe aren't as confident working with actors. Mm. There's that too. And sometimes, and plus editing... There's a lot of things that, that have to obviously gel a movie together. And if, if one of them is out of sync, maybe it doesn't hold it together. I don't know. I mean, I, I've read similar reviews as well of this film. There's a lot of people that like it, as yeah. with most films. you know, I mean, They all have their audiences. But then there are a number of out, uh, people out there that found that it dragged. Yeah, yeah. And the acting was not as uh, as as you know full on as it could be. Yeah. So I mean, I think it got mixed reviews. Yeah, release. I think you know quite a few positive, but it didn't do very well at the box office. Yeah, I mean Billy Connolly, obviously he's a you know he's a stand-up comedian. If you don't know who he is, then that's who he is. He's a, you know a Scottish stand-up comedian who is hilarious. I mean, often I've forgotten how to speak while watching him perform because he's just so funny. His acting, he's got great acting chops as well. He's done a lot of great films over the years. I mean, Sir Billy Connolly, isn't he now? Yeah. But here, I mean, it's a different, totally different thing for him here. Mm. It's more physical. I mean, there's a couple of moments where saw, he trips over and he like smacks his head on the chair, which could be <laughs> funny. I mean, it's it's timed well, but it didn't, it didn't, maybe it was just slightly off time. I, I mm. don't know. It didn't make me laugh when it should have made me laugh. And maybe he's not as physically funny. I, I don't know. I there is always the chance that I was in an, or having an off day. I got home from work and I was a bit stressed, maybe, and I didn't quite click. Maybe I should give it another go when I'm not. And there's that too, isn't there? I think the trouble with doing this, and yeah. we, I've mentioned this before, is when we watch films for this, we're kind of. I'm watching it in a different way. I'm yeah, watching yeah. it on. I'm thinking on more on how what I'm going to talk about, yeah. and, gonna, and I often make notes while I'm going. So I'm not really watching it fresh and maybe no. I should give it another shot um it's not like hard rain a couple of weeks ago I won't bother with that one again <laughs> uh, I watched it and that was fine for me but this one I kind of when I read about it I was like because you, you mentioned it a while ago I think yeah, you were possibly going to do a zombie theme month or something mm. and I thought that sounds really interesting and I'm I'm, I'm kind of disappointed that I didn't enjoy <laughs> it in that way because I love matinee I love other 50s kind of set films like this mm. matinee and parents and pleasantville and blast from the past which is a little bit like Pleasantville, although he comes from the 50s into the modern world. So there's, I like those kind of movies. Mm. I don't know. Sorry. It's all right. <laughs> can't love everything. You can't love everything. <laughs> I mean, if you do watch it, there's quite a few little background details that you, you, know, you can pick up on. So, for example, in Timmy's bedroom, and he's got sort of uh, salt, army-themed bedding and curtain matching curtains <clears throat> yeah. and but if you look closely you could see that some of the figures on it are zombies <laughs> so okay. it's obviously zombie wars zombie themed war kings, um, yeah. curtains and bedding and there's other little little things that are well, going on that... i mean the town it's set is willard which yeah. is the same name as the town in night of the living dead it so, is, yep, there's yep. so there's a few his name is taken from the kid in lassie and of course it's quite you know there are parallels with lassie and there's even one point where fido comes to get his mum and he goes what's where's timmy <laughs> And he has to go yeah, and, 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 yeah and, and that's that's. I wish there'd be more of that in there. I think I, I wish there'd be more of a kind of the the the, the boy pet dog connection, mm. which I think I felt kind of it just the ending wasn't it just the ending went a bit a little bit uninspired. And I, I wish there'd be more of that kind of, you know. But you're right. He becomes the kind of more replaced father as opposed mm. to a, an actual pet dog. But, yeah, uh, yeah. That's I think had it been more of a satire on. You know, family satire has been done a lot, mm. but pet dog, not really. <laughs> satire on 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 the you know family the family pet, because it's a big thing in people's lives. And, yeah. and I thought that would have been maybe more interesting. But uh, you have it on DVD anyway. I do like the cover. That's yeah, yeah. Cover. I, I picked some... it up a while ago off off eBay. Yeah, the fun <laughs> fun cover. Billy Connolly in his makeup. Um, but no, there's it's quite a few extras. There's commentaries and uh, and a making of and deleted scenes and, and, and stuff like that. So, um, 
Oh, there's lots to lots to get through. I mean, the quotes, you know, hilariously funny, hysterical, gut laughing, funny. I don't know. It's not that. No, because I didn't, and that's the Hilarious. thing. I didn't. I no. It didn't. I mean, it didn't make me laugh in that way. You know, some some nice observations and some you know funny. Like I said, the, the sort of stuff in the background that will raise a, a smile. But no, it's not gut bustingly funny. I would no. say. But no, I don't no. think it's you know it's not intended to be. No. I didn't get that impression anyway. So yeah, I mean, if you want it. It's been released on DVD all over the place. I think the the UK DVD drops the commentaries, I think. Yeah, it only has the deleted scenes and I think the blooper reel. uh, There's not many Blu-rays. Obviously, a Canadian film, it was released in Canada on Blu-ray, which seems to be out of print, quite hard to get hold of now. And Germany, as far as I can tell, it seems to be English-friendly and quite cheap. So if you do want it in blue, then that might be the one to go for. I would say, if if you remember that film Parents we did, if you took Parents, crossed it with revolutionary road mm-hmm. and crossed that with Shaun of the Dead right. it might get Fido <laughs> in there somewhere there you go, go. <laughs> <laughs> and that was Fido and as always if you enjoyed the video let us know in the comments below hit the subscribe button up there and don't forget to push the bell for notifications there's other videos to check out over there come and find us on social media and join us again soon for another video